I found a fella up with the bins. I thought I'd bring him in for a chat this morning. Heck, there are good. How's it going, boy? How's it going? How are you, boy? How's it going? Just came up the Cotterhin Raw there. <laughs> just come up, we cut across traffic as well. We came across Umbar there at the back of the CIT. We came across the Umbar Road. Umbar Road. What a name for a road. Um, Umbar Road. You're obsessed with roads, aren't you? I just, uh, yeah, but I'm obsessed with, just finding new places. I don't think I've ever come around that way through Bishopstown, so. Uh, fair play to the taxi driver for bringing me to Red FM through, oh, you, the, through the house you got, you got a taxi I thought you were driving that's why I was I was sending you Google Maps to get here and everything no we got here we got here you got here alive and well what are you doing down in Cork uh, I'm down to talk about the new show that starts on TG Car tonight yeah uh, Hector Central we have to spend 10 weeks in the jungles of Central America unbelievable unbelievable yeah, we went Panama, down. Costa Rica Honduras El Salvador Guatemala Guatemala um, Guatemala it was a Belize you ended up in Belize, as well Belize uh, the second biggest barrier reef in the world a mixture between Mexico and Jamaica uh, I got in a high ace van in the southern part of Panama and I drove for, we drove for 4,000 miles they have high ace over there uh, they have high ace they have Hyundai they have Honda so for us as wow. an Irish TV crew Keith yeah. like all we wanted to know was when we got into each country when we crossed the border crossings in the middle of the mountains I wonder what van we'll have next we'd say goodbye to Jose hello to Juan <laughs> and we'd hop into the high ace <laughs> And that's how we travel because there's no trains in Central America. Yeah, yeah. You can fly to the big cities, but we wanted to give you a real Sulela, a real different flavour of the country, and and that's what we've been doing for 16 years on this show. Do you remember the day that you took me out to uh, TG Cahar out in Spittle? We went for a spin in your punto. You had a souped up punto. Don't mess with the punto. Go fast stripes. The best to DJ Ted from the GPO. I, paid, I think I paid four thousand Irish pounds for that punt. Back in the day, she was black. She was black. I put the hubcaps with the red with the cable ties and the CV with the C- cable ties. I know and the CB now, aerial. No, I had no. I didn't have a CB aerial, no, but I had just added added faster it. stripes. Yeah, you did. My Fiat Punto. She was a one point two SX. Beauty, a lovely machine. Never knocked the power of the Punto. <laughs> So we a went great down. Irish car, isn't it? Yeah, unbelievable. Like you will always see a sound family in the Punto. <laughs> You'll always see nice people in Puntos. They just attract nice people. Uh, so we went out to TG Gahar. You were doing voiceovers for what was going to be your very first travel show. Wow. And yeah. you, you took, you took me for a spin out. This is back in 2000? Yeah, yeah. We started travelling in 2000. Yeah. It's incredible. And to celebrate, you know, TG Car had a big birthday on Monday night. 20 it's the 20th anniversary, yeah. And where would we be without TG Car? And uh, I think it's one of the greatest things that's ever happened to the country. Yeah, and it's yeah. part and parcel. It's given us another option. It's given us a choice and it's given us colour and it's given us the language and our culture and it's given us the county finals on Sunday and the yeah. Pro 12 on a Friday. And yeah. I'm very proud that I, I got the start with TG Car. And you know, and I uh, will go back to the beginning of this because I think when you joined TG Cahard there was a bit of a movement there was a huge shift where <clears throat> I don't want to use the word cool but uh, the Irish language you brought it to the masses and you made it something that people all of a sudden set up and took paid attention to yeah. uh, so you know hat, hats off to you for that like yeah we didn't plan it like that I suppose when I, I got on a plane going to Thailand in 2000 uh, we were going to Asia for three months with Roscoe the cameraman was on my right hand side we were sandwiched into a row like 37, 38 and 39 and Evan Chamberlain the producer who's larger than life is on my left hand side on my right hand side is a cameraman I never met before he had a Leinster rugby jersey with the collar up reading a Michael Schumacher biography and I was going who is this plonker <laughs> beside me for the next three months in Asia I don't even know these guys to cut a long story short 16 years later they're still with me I got married in Brazil they were my best men in the Amazon the week before uh, Roscoe is now shooting Who Dares Wins on Channel 4 and winning BAFTAs for Grand Designs Whoa. Evan is still a brilliant producer on my left he wakes me up we used to go for three months at a time Keith. three months in Africa three months in Australia three months in Asia it's an incredible journey we've been on how do you you know as a, as a dad of a couple of young fellas and Dimpna and the two boys how do they let pop head away for that length of time oh, back in the day there ain't no babies but no like now but now even, it's even now, n- now now they're like dad we'll come with you actually we'll be fine in the hotel and now we're yeah. going lads you're not you're not going to really enjoy it so there's a lot of bribery keep but it's it's a lot more difficult now because my boys are like my they're 12 and 11 almost 13 and, and 11 and um, they're like my mates we were watching the Champions League there last year lying in uh, fire on Tuesday night Champions League homework yeah. done okay mommy pottering around the house the three lads in roast and fire and then I heard my youngest boy going Mom, Mom, you wouldn't burn the kettle there and bring us in a few slices of Swiss roll would you there <laughs> and, I, and I went that's my boy that's my boy you've Check crafted going, him what the hell is this is this a restaurant or something and I went oh mads you've got it sussed please like don't father tell like me. son please don't tell me they're lying on the couch wearing United jerseys they're, are they they're hardcore United why did you there's do a lot that? of pain at the moment a lot abuse. of pain even I, there was pain for Moyes there was pain for Van Gaal it's very painful at the moment How's the tea? Is it okay? That's great tea. It's good tea. It's Cork's Barry's tea for you now, buddy. Tell us about this priest that you met. Um, 
we, we, we arrived in Teguji Kalpa, which is the capital of Honduras, one of the world's most dangerous cities, probably the most dangerous city in the world. And we stayed in the hotel for a day or two and got our bearings, uh, did a bit of filming in the city. Then we drove four hours north into uh, the uh, state of Olancho, it's the size of Leinster, it's one wow. county. Okay. Met a priest called Padre Alberto, 39 years living over there from Malta. First of all, the Lord Mayor in the village, never seen any tourism before, never seen any Irish TV crews. Three guys arrived with a load of TV equipment into this area in the middle of the countryside. He's going, why is he here? What brings you to Juti Calpo is the name of the place. Yeah. We said, we're here to meet the priest. So I met Padre Alberto, skinny guy, drinking coffee, uh, smoking cigarettes. He's got a little t-shirt on him and he goes, bienvenidos, hola mi amigos. So we start talking about music. He loves Pearl Jam. He's in his 60s. He loves Soundgarden. Whoa. He was right up my alley. I was talking. <laughs> then he goes, come on, I'll show you what I've done. Brought me down to an orphanage that he's built for the local kids. There's no orphanage. There was no old people's home in the town. He, had, he built a magnificent church and okay. he built a bakery to, 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 to feed all the orphanage to feed the old people's home to feed the, the town as well and then he said to me I've built one more thing and I said I've heard that you've built one more thing and we just stood on a hillside outside the town and we turned around and he says here's the football stadium that I built Whoa. he built a football stadium 25,000 seater football stadium took him seven years took eight local lads seven years to build a football stadium for the town. His passion is football. He now sits with the local team in the middle of the dugout. This is a man of the people, for the people. The team was in the second division, now it's in the Primera Honduran division. This is an incredible story of a Franciscan priest in the middle of Honduras who just does it all for the parish. This is like the father whoring equivalent of football stadiums. To, to stand in the middle of the stadium and, and, and we went, went into it. Just, they, had no, they had pulleys, they had no cranes. It took them seven years, eight lads, seven years to build a stadium. Jeez, you wouldn't so, want to be in a rush with them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, you wouldn't see any <laughs> McNamara's or Sisters. Better <laughs> built by Rattigan. <laughs> better <laughs> built by Padre Alberto. I did, I did the same lads that did the roadworks in Budavent as well. I, I think. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, you, I, you could get him in to do a few jobs in Ireland. <laughs> cranes, we don't need cranes. <laughs> Just get the job done. But this is a, this is like, an, you're going to see this on all the shows as we go through Central America. You brilliant people. Happy people. Some people living on $2 a day. Some people making $25 million a day. We all know who they are. Yeah. But they've got the biggest banana plantations, the best coffee in the world, they've got the best tobacco in the world. And it really is, it's, it's sad that Colombia and Peru are underneath them because it is the gateway for, for narcos. It is, the ga- it is the world's biggest cocaine highway. And when it's that corrupt, when you have government, politicians and police Everyone making involved. trillions of dollars, yeah. you know, they don't want people coming to the jungles. They don't want people going down there. When you Google Central America, they want you to stay well away from it because they're just happy enough doing their own thing. Let it take over. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a crazy little place. And I think with the rise of nar- narcos on Netflix... Uh, people have got very, very interested in what was going on down there. So we're going to give you a really good blushing of what's going on down there. Eight weeks, right. is that right? Eight weeks all the way to Christmas. Brilliant. Thursday night's at 10 o'clock. If you don't get tonight, you can check it out in the player. Excellent. It's so nice. good to see you again, my man. Man, mm. I'll, next time you come to go, I'll bring you a spin in my brand new Punto 1.2. <laughs> <laughs> out to TG Car. Hector, great to see you it's again. It's a mass mortal going to mock the Red FM because of Kirky Posse. Yep. The KC Show with McDonald's Coffee. 100% freshly ground Arabica beans in every brew. Cork's Red FM.